Cancer cells have 10 times the amount of glucose and insulin receptors as a regular cell, which means that they are 10 times more likely to be susceptible to the negative effects of glucose, which is exactly why fasting is so critical when it comes down to cancer prevention and potentially even cancer treatment. So here's the thing, by now we know that fasting is extremely powerful when it comes down to dictating how a cell uses energy, how a normal healthy cell within the body uses energy. Okay, basically fasting will help a normal cell start to utilize fats as a fuel source significantly better through manipulation of the mitochondrial machinery within a cell. But let's take a look at how cancer cells are different from traditional cells. And in doing so, we understand exactly why fasting has such a profound effect on potentially treating cancer. So here's the thing. Cancer cells cannot utilize aerobic metabolism. What does that mean? It means that cancer cells can't utilize fats as a fuel source. They can't create energy by combining oxygen with fat, whereas a normal cell in the body can. You see, cancer cells get almost all of their energy through processes known as phosphorylation, which means it's the fermentation of glucose or the fermentation of glutamine that essentially ends up giving a cancer cell energy. What does that mean? That means that cancer cells thrive on glucose, sugar, carbohydrates. And this isn't a carbohydrate bashing session. Don't get me wrong. It's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just saying that a cancer cell is 10 times more likely to utilize that sugar in a negative way simply because the insulin receptors are 10 times more than they are on a traditional healthy human cell. So when it comes down to a healthy cell, a healthy cell can go ahead and utilize fats whenever it wants. Whereas a cancer cell ends up saying, wait a minute, I can't use fats. I'm just gonna use more sugar and become more efficient at using sugar. To start making some more sense of this outside of just the whole glucose side of things, there was a study that University of Southern California conducted that was published in a journal called Cancer Cell. And this study took a look at gene expression, which is a pretty interesting thing. It took a look at regulatory T cells. See, in our body, we have these things called T cells. They go around and they slap labels on foreign bodies to have other T cells come around later and kill them. It's what basically is our immune system and what basically fights off disease in foreign bodies. Cancer cells are essentially a foreign body. So when we have a cancer cell that comes into our body and it starts to proliferate, starts to metastasize, we end up having an upregulation of T cell activity. We have a lot of T cells. But the other thing that we have to pay attention to is that our body is very good at adapting. And that means that even though cancer cells are bad, once they make a home in our body, our bodies welcome them in and do things to protect them, which means we start creating specific T cells that will actually protect the cancer cells. You ever wonder why cancer is so hard to fight? because cancer does a really good job of hijacking our immune system and making it so that it's still really difficult to target. Because every time we try to target a cancer cell, we're also targeting a healthy cell. So there's specific T cells that actually protect cancer cells. And through fasting, USC found that it ended up down-regulating specific gene expression of something known as the HO1 gene inside a regulatory T cell. Basically what that meant is after a short period of fasting, the T cells that normally protect cancer cells were reduced, sometimes even completely eradicated, meaning that adjunct treatment with vitamin C or chemotherapy could be a lot more powerful when it comes down to getting rid of cancer. That's just a short-term fast. Studies haven't even been conducted on longer-term fasting because obviously the results can be even more profound when you're fasting for a long period of time. So now let's take a look at overall fasting metabolism on a healthy cell and fasting metabolism on a cancer cell. So like I mentioned, a cancer cell doesn't have the ability to vacillate back and forth between aerobic metabolism and anaerobic, utilizing sugar. So what ends up happening is when we starve ourselves of carbohydrates through fasting, because we're dramatically reducing our insulin, our glucose concentrations within the body, what ends up happening is that cancer cell essentially starves. It becomes very, very weakened. It can't do much because it ends up just totally not having energy. So it shrinks or it allows treatment to be more effective because it doesn't have the energy to ultimately fight it off. So this vulnerability is really the main focal point of fasting in a cancer cell. And that's how fasting affects the metabolism of a cancer cell. In a healthy cell, it ends up doing it quite different. You see that healthy cell, like I mentioned earlier, has the ability to say, wait a minute, there's no glucose coming into the equation now. There's no carbohydrates here. In fact, there's no calories at all. Well, we need to shift gears. We need to tell the mitochondria within that cell to start burning fat and stored body tissue. So it starts wasting away your fat. It starts using that as energy because it's a very efficient, smart cell. Whereas cancer cells, although they're smart in a vindictive, terrible, manipulative way, they're not very smart when it comes down to metabolism. They're kind of a one-trick pony. So that's really how the metabolism differs between the two cells. Lastly, 
we have to look at inflammation and how it relates to digestion. When we eat food, it takes a big toll on our body. I'm not saying you should never eat, but the fact is, this traditional way of thinking where we just eat constantly and we're always grazing, we're always eating at least three or four square meals per day, is really, really hard on our bodies. We may not feel it, but it's happening at an inflammatory level within the body. So when you're fasting, you're reducing the production of what is called interleukin-6, which is a very powerful stimulator for inflammation, and you're also reducing something known as tumor necrosis factor 1 alpha. And just like the name implies, tumor necrosis factor 1 alpha, it has to do directly with cancer and tumors. So when you reduce the production of that through not eating, you end up reducing the ability to feed a cancer cell. But also, you reduce the ability to create a cancer cell in the first place. So at the end of the day, fasting is not only a tremendous way to help treat cancer in adjunct with proper pharmaceutical intervention and proper high-dose vitamin C therapy, it's also very powerful as a preventative measure. So as always, I wanna make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. If you do have ideas for future videos surrounding the world of fasting, cancer, disease, whatever, you name it, put it in the comment section below or go to thomasdelauer.com and shoot us a message. Anyhow, I will see you in the next video and thanks for watching.